it's going to be a busy week here on the channel, guys. We got the NFL draft coming up. It's going to be interesting to see which players go where. Um, I'm not real big on the NFL draft. Actually, I don't like it, don't care about it, but I know a lot of you guys do. So we'll get to that later in the week. And I also saw something interesting yesterday. The Niners, it's being reported, are going to pass on Justin Fields at the number three spot, which is interesting when you think about it because all offseason, all we've heard out of San Francisco is the fact that they need a quarterback, even though they already have Jimmy Garoppolo. So I'm sure we'll get into the draft later this week. But today, I am going to go on another rant about the NBA. I realize I've done the past couple of videos about rants on the NBA, but that was mainly about LeBron James. Today, I'm going to talk about the NBA as a whole and what is really pissing me off about it. I have been a lifelong fan of the NBA. I started watching the Orlando Magic when they drafted Shaquille O'Neal back in the early 90s. My great-grandmother, she was a huge fan of LSU. So as a child, I watched Shaq at LSU. Once he was drafted to Orlando, I followed him to the NBA, became a fan of the Magic. So I've been watching the NBA for damn near 30 years. I mean it when I say this. I have never seen the league in as bad of shape as it is in right now. The NBA today, the NBA sucks. It sucks. I mean, let's just be real here. The NBA has sucked for a couple of years now. And it starts at the top, too. Adam Silver, Adam Silver is the worst commissioner in all of professional sports. Not only does he look like an alien, he acts like one, too. He is weak. He allows the players to run the league instead of the owners running the league. Now, I was in denial for a while with the NBA. I used to defend the NBA when my friends would say that it's boring. There is absolutely no defending this garbage that the NBA presents to us on a nightly basis. The NBA, like I said, they have been god-awful for the past two or three years now. Now, last year, I give them a little bit of a pass. That was unusual circumstances. They did the best they could down in the bubble in Orlando. They really did. And after having no sports for five months, I was actually excited when the NBA returned in August. Now then, of course, I was instantly disappointed once they started playing the games. It seemed like half the players didn't want to be there. Guys like George Hill was whining every day that they had to play basketball for millions of dollars while other people in the country were being killed by police. You know, players in the NBA, they had it so rough last year in the bubble. We should feel bad for them. They couldn't go to strip clubs. They couldn't leave the bubble. It was tough. Never mind the fact that most of the country was worried about, you know, how they were going to put food on the table and feed their family. NBA players were whining and complaining that they had to play basketball while being paid millions of dollars. I think my disdain for the modern NBA started last summer when the Bucks boycotted a playoff game against the Magic. Now, they weren't boycotting over money or a labor issue. This was not a union issue that they were boycotting over. They boycotted that game over a political issue. That was at the point I realized the players in this league are out of touch with their audience. When you are in the entertainment business, and that's what the NFL and the NBA are, entertainment. When you are in the entertainment business and you find yourself out of touch with your audience, the paying customer, then you have one hell of a problem. And to add on to that problem, the NBA doesn't seem to realize that they're even out of touch. I challenge you guys, I challenge you to name one relatable star player in the NBA. Give me one star player that the general public, the, the average fan, can relate to. I'll save you the time. There's not one. When you're a star-driven league, you have to have superstar players that the audience can get behind. Back in the 90s, you could relate to guys like Reggie Miller. He was trying to overcome Michael Jordan and the Bulls. He was the underdog. Back in the late 80s, Jordan and the Bulls were in the same scenario with the Pistons. There were heated rivalries in the NBA back then. The Bulls and the Pistons, they hated each other. The Knicks and the Bulls hated each other. 
There was passion in the NBA back then. When those teams played each other, it didn't matter if it was a regular season game in November or game seven in the playoffs. Both teams wanted to win. They gave 100%. There is no passion in the NBA today. None. Which means there are no great rivalries. In order to have a good rivalry, you got to have passion. What is a good rivalry today in the NBA? I can't name one. The last decent rivalry that we had was LeBron versus the Warriors. But, I mean, it really wasn't all that great. And it's not like the NBA doesn't have the pieces needed to form rivalries. The second biggest market in the country, Los Angeles, has four of the biggest stars in the league playing on two different teams. Yet there is no bad blood between the Clippers and the Lakers. They would rather be friends with each other and play grab ass on the court after the game than be fierce competitors against each other. No one wants to watch friends go to battle against each other. They want to watch enemies. Let me ask you something. Who is the best trash talker in the NBA today? Who is it? Can you think of one? Just one? No one talks trash anymore. It's all friendly. It's all respectful. It's boring. It's kind of like the UFC. Watching two guys fight in the octagon, that's okay. It's all right. But watching two enemies fight in the octagon, that is money. You can take that to the bank. That's why Conor McGregor is so successful. That's why Tito Ortiz and Ken Shamrock, their rivalry was so successful. Ken Shamrock was way past his prime. The fights that they had weren't even competitive. But they made a lot of money because they were bitter enemies. Chael Sonnen. Chael Sonnen lost more than he won. But he was an excellent trash talker. He literally talked people into buying his fights. It's the same type of thing in the NBA. These modern players are just too friendly. Jerry West, arguably the best general manager in the history of the league, he agrees with me on this. He came out the other day and he said that the NBA is too friendly. Now, another thing the league is sorely missing is storylines. You need players with storylines that people can get invested in. Take LeBron James, for example, the leader of the modern NBA. For eight to ten years, the major storyline in the NBA was LeBron chasing his first championship. Now, after he won a couple titles with the Heat, the major storyline was him wanting to win a title for his hometown Cavaliers, Cleveland a city that hadn't had a major championship in sports in like 60 or 70 years at that point. What is the major storyline today in the NBA? I'll save you the trouble, and you might be noticing a pattern here. There's not one. It is mind-boggling to me. Because the league has young stars. You have Trey Young and the surging Hawks in Atlanta. No one cares. Atlanta's the only major city in this country where... No one cares about their sports teams. Hell, they don't even care about their teams in Atlanta. They don't give a damn about the Hawks. Then we have Giannis and the Bucks in Milwaukee, who could be a great storyline. It could be a repeat of LeBron, you know, where Giannis is chasing his first title. And the Bucks chasing their first title since I think it's the 70s. But no one buys the Bucks as real contenders. So there's no storyline there. You have Zion and the Pelicans. But they're absolutely god-awful. They suck. One of the most talented teams in the league, and they can't win. So fans can't get invested in them. Then with the Lakers, LeBron James has pissed off so many people with his ridiculous political agendas that people refuse to watch him. There's a large majority of people that refuse to watch the NBA altogether because of LeBron James. And let me get to my last gripe with the NBA today. The regular season is meaningless. The regular season in the NBA used to actually mean something. It used to have value. Because players in the league don't take the regular season seriously, fans don't take it seriously. Why should fans get invested in these games? Why should they waste two and a half, three hours of their time to watch when the players don't give a damn about the games in the regular season? Hell, in some cases, you can't even get the players to show up to work. You know how many games Michael Jordan missed for rest? Zero. You know how many games Reggie Miller missed for rest? 
Zero. That's how it was back in the 90s when there were real men playing in the NBA. Now compare that with today. Kyrie Irving basically missed the entire month of January because he was on a sabbatical. A damn sabbatical two, three weeks into the season. Imagine that you start a new job and you're there for a month and you go tell your boss that you need time off for rest. They would laugh you out of the building. Kawhi Leonard, he has missed 16 games already this season. Now they call it load management, but the reality of it is Kawhi Leonard just picks and chooses when he wants to play. Can you imagine that happening in the NFL? Hey, hey, Bill Belichick, Tom Brady's not going to play this Sunday against the Jets because, you know, he needs to catch up on his sleep. I thought Adam Silver was going to start fining teams and players for resting games. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I've yet to see it happen this year. I think he fined the Spurs a couple of weeks ago. I think he might have fined them maybe into the six figures. I don't remember what it was. I saw something about it. But I thought he fined them for resting players. But that's the only instance that I can think of. Just another example of Adam Silver being weak. The NBA just sucks right now. It sucks. And then they wonder why the ratings are down. We are about three weeks, maybe four weeks from the playoffs. And I expect that we are going to see record low ratings for the playoffs this year. I think they're going to be worse than the record low ratings that they had last year. The NBA, the NBA is no longer must-watch television. The games are just boring. The players aren't relatable. People, for the most part, they just don't care about the NBA anymore. And it's a shame, too, because they have everything they need to be successful. They just can't get the hell out of their own way. All right, are you guys still watching the NBA? And if you're not, tell me why you quit watching. Did it become too political? Did you lose interest because the players don't give a damn about the regular season? Or is it a combination of things that made you quit watching? Let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.